This past winter I traded in my Honda Civic for a Subaru Forester. I love the old camping setup in my Honda Civic and I learned a lot while building and using it. For me, the Subaru was a clean slate and an opportunity for me to start from scratch on a new build. The total build process went rather quickly. I worked on it during nights and weekends and finished it in less than three weeks. It took me about a month to design and lay out the entire build, but there were things that I was still unsure about even as I started building. I will link in the description to a full set of plans for this build as well as an online 3D model that I updated with my final design. The car is a 2015 Subaru Forester. <laughs> I'm not a car guy, but it's a lot larger than my Civic and it's got a lot more ground clearance. The entire design is built using 3 quarter and half inch plywood. I am using sandy plywood as I thought it has a decent finish and I'm pretty happy with the results of it so far. The main frame is built using 3 quarter inch plywood. It has 5 total pieces, 2 large horizontal pieces that are custom fit to the shape of the trunk, and 3 vertical supports that create 2 large areas of storage underneath the platform. So that I didn't lose access to the space underneath the build where the spare tire is stored, I cut an opening in the left side of the frame. This allows me to shove longer items such as my inflatable boat, toolkits, solar panels, towels and blankets, even my kayak paddles and fishing pole break down and fit underneath there as well. The entire build is constructed with pocket screws. I found this method to be really strong and pretty easy to manage, especially with the thicker plywood. I learned how to use pocket screws mainly from YouTuber Steve Ramsey. Finally, I added these supports to the end to help provide more strength and keep all the existing joints from moving or flexing. For the bed frame I wanted to add additional storage areas while also keeping the seats installed. Therefore I decided to build the bed on top of a storage box. Even though this cuts into my headroom, it is still more than enough room for me to be sitting up or getting in and out of bed. I built the top of the box in two sections to create a hinged lid and added supports to hold it open securely for easier access. I added T-nuts to the rear of the bed frame and the trunk frame to hold the two securely together. This design is similar to my last build, but using these T-nuts instead of regular nuts will make it much easier to remove the bolts.
I plan to use this as my closet, and to make it easier to access when I'm in bed, I decided to cut this cubby hole on the side of the bed box. It will allow me to pull out a new shirt or socks without getting out of bed. After building the trunk and the bed frame, I decided to trim down the entire build by 2 inches. I kept having the thought that I really needed more headroom, and I'm glad I made the decision to cut it down. It really ended up making a difference in the feel of the inside, and didn't end up decreasing too much of the storage areas underneath. I also decided to leave the area with the rear passenger seat untouched. If I need to be in a different position, I can spin over from the bed and sit in the passenger seat without getting out of the car. I took inspiration from Solid Woodworks and their Forerunner double drawer video for my drawer system. In that video, he uses two sets of drawer slides built within two interlocking drawers. One is pulled out to create a countertop space, and the other is pulled out from inside to create additional storage. I ended up customizing the measurements to fit my build, but copied this design exactly, and it worked out very well. I'm really happy with the finished results. The bed and the trunk frame only account for about 5 feet of the bed. I designed the final portion to fold out in a similar way to my previous build. This time I wanted to build a structure underneath the folding portion that added areas for storage. I was able to build in two shelves that I plan to use to hold camera gear and batteries that still need to be charged. The final bed area ended up being 6 foot 6. I'm only six foot one, and so that will be plenty of room for me. For the drawer face, I wanted to create additional tabletop space, and specifically I wanted to create an area for my jet foil stove. I also was able to add a cup holder, which I've always wanted to install on a build. What I ended up with turned out pretty nice and makes the drawer look much more finished. I ended up covering the countertop space with a sheet of aluminum and attaching it with spray adhesive. After sanding it, the finish looks rather nice and it should be pretty easy to clean. I used a black automotive trim carpet for covering the build and a variety of spray adhesives. I ended up using the 3M90 for most of the carpeting. I found it was much easier to control and it had the strongest hold. The finished look of the carpet blends in very well with my car's interior and really helps the build to blend in. I added four tie-down points to the build, two in the trunk to secure items during travel, and two on the rear of the trunk frame to fasten the build to the car. I used turnbuckles to loop into the car's tie-down points, and these help to provide extra strength and security when I have the drawer fully extended.
I'm really pleased with how this build turned out, but I am already thinking of additions and upgrades. For now though, I will be testing it out and getting a feel for how I will really be using it.